In lesson two, we'll be working with form design. We're going to rebuild the customer form that we started in access level one. We'll learn how to add, move, and resize controls, align and size objects, and we'll change the foreground and background colors. Back in level one, we built this real simple customer form. Okay, now building user-friendly customer forms is really more of an art than a science. Okay, I've been working with Access for almost 30 years now, and so I've spent hundreds of hours playing with forms and form design and you know, getting everything to look just right. So don't be frustrated if your form doesn't look like you want it to look like the first time through. Okay? Now, if you're building your database just for your own use, then that's great. You can make it look however you want to. If you're building it for other people, remember you want to make your forms nice and easy to follow so that if they're not computer experts, they can still figure out what's going on. Your end users are going to interface with your database only using your forms and reports. You don't want your end users playing around inside your tables and your queries. And later on, I'll show you how to hide those things. Again, if you want to learn now, I have a video called Simple Security. I'll put it in the link section down below. Go watch that. It's a couple of quick tips and tricks on how to make your database so that your users can't poke around in things they shouldn't be seeing right now. Now, since I believe the practice makes perfect, we're going to delete that customer form. Right click, delete, are you sure? Yep, we're gonna start over. I'm gonna show you some new tricks and tips this time around too. So it's not, it's not all, all wasted time from building it before. Okay, now I've got my ribbon collapsed up here as you can see if I double click on something like the home on the menu there, you can see it pops back open. At the save space, I usually close it, you just double click and it collapses it. And you can just click once if you wanna use something temporarily and then it'll go away. But let's leave it open for class, it's easier to deal with. Let's create, and we'll go over to form design. There's our blank form. Remember, we're going to bind this form to a specific table. You can have either a table or a query as the record source for your form. That's where it's getting its records from. So right there, that little box right there, that's the properties for the form. We're going to double click on that spot. That brings up the property sheet. Here, right where those ruler bars meet, that little square there. Now, come on over here to the property sheet, click on the data tab and find the record source property. That's where this form gets its data from. All right, click in here, drop this little box down, pick the customer table. Now you'll notice right down here where it says filter and order by, we've got it filtered to show customers from New York and there's an order by which is a sort. It's gonna sort by first name, last name. That's because when we were playing around with our customer table, I showed you how to filter and sort records. That was lesson eight of level one. Now, you might not want that in here, so we can just delete them out of here. Delete and delete. Okay. Now, let's save this form real quick. Control S on the keyboard. This will be my customer F, my customer form. And now we can add records to the table. So let's close the property sheet. Let's go to form design, add existing fields. There's a list of the fields in the customer form. We did a little bit of this last time, remember? Let's grab the customer ID, click and drag, drop it. Don't drop it too close to the margin over there. Otherwise, it'll squish up that label, right? I'm going to delete that. Try again. Click and drag. I like to bring it right about there and drop it. And now you can grab the label if you want to and move it, right? If you click on something like this, you see the four-way pointing arrow, you can click and drag, All right, And it'll bring both of them together. If you want to move one independent of the other, remember we got the label over here and the text box over here. These little squares in the upper left corner will let you move them independent of each other. You want to do something like that. Sometimes you want to put a label above the text box like this. Okay, then you can line it up that way. But in this case, I'm going to grab you and move you over there. In older versions of Access, you used to get a little finger. It'd be a single pointing finger. Okay. Here's a little keyboard trick for you guys. I'm, I'm a keyboard guy. I sometimes don't want to have to stop and grab the mouse. So if you, if you click on an object like that and use the arrow keys, it will also move up, down, left, right like that. See? And you can see these little dots in the background. That's called the grid. We're going to talk about the grid in the next lesson. But when you move with just the arrow keys, it moves one whole grid dot at a time. But if you want to nudge it just a tiny bit, hold the control key down. And it will nudge just one pixel at a time. See that? That's kind of neat. Okay. All right. I'm going to move it back up here, though. I like to throw in little keyboard shortcut tricks whenever possible because I'm a keyboard nut myself. Especially after working with a mouse for eight hours, my hand starts to, that carpal tunnel's kicking in, right? 
So let's save our form again. Save often. Control S. Save all the time. When you're designing objects, you want to save as much as, as possible. All right. When you're working with the database, then remember, every record gets saved when you move off of the record. So if you type in a customer's record and you move to someone else, their record gets saved. You don't have to save your data. Okay, but your form design, save that often. Let's switch back over to form view now, and that's what it's going to look like so far. All right, customer ID, and then a one. And if you move through the records, we got 16 records, but we only got the customer ID on the form right now. All right, let's go back to design view. Again, you can use the view drop down box over here, go to design view, or I like to right click and go to design view right on the title bar there, or on the, uh, yeah, the title bar. <laughs> All right, let's bring in first name, the next field, click and drag. Remember, we're not going to line it up with the label. We're going to line it up right there under the text box like that. Oh, and I even missed. So, yeah, you know why? Because it's too big, right? There's too much of a gap there. The label's pushing me over. So I'm going to have to slide that over and then maybe move this over. Give me some more room like that. Put first name under it there. Okay, now these labels get all messed up. So I'm going to click on it. Let's resize these labels a little bit. See these little dots? around there those dots are what you used to resize with so we can click on that dot right there click and drag click and drag this one that right click and drag that one okay that's how you resize these guys you can make them bigger this way too if you want to but that looks kind of dumb so bring it like that <laughs> there's all kinds of shortcut tricks we're going to learn too so just bear with me now again if you want to bring over multiple fields you can click on the first one hold down the shift key click on the last one That'll select all of them. Then let go of the shift key, click and drag any one of them over here onto the form. Just like that, that brings that whole block over. Okay, and then you can move them up here if you want to, or you can move them all at the same time by just dragging a box around them and then clicking and dragging like that. Okay. You can also add individual ones by using the control key. So pick one, hit the control key, hold that down, click, click, maybe that one, click, right? Now I can add these four controls and just drag them and put them right there. Okay, I don't want that yet though, so let's hit delete, go away. Now let's say I wanna put last name up here next to first name. Let's delete the label. You can delete a label independent of its text box. Remember, if you delete the text box, they both go away. So if I delete country right here, boom, the label goes away too. Okay, I'll undo that, control Z, undo. Right, but if I delete the label, the text box still sticks around. Okay, that's because you want, might wanna do this, right? First name, space, last name. Then we'll change our label up here, right? First, comma, last names. All right, now that label's getting just a little bit too long. Let's move these guys over a little bit more, right? Slide them over, and we're gonna take both of these labels. We're gonna make them a little bit bigger this way. All right, then we can make them a little smaller. Now see, it's doing them both at the same time. You might wanna make these guys align the exact same. So you can select them like this, right click, and go size to widest. See that? And it sized them both to the widest. There's a whole bunch of little shortcuts on that menu I'm gonna teach you over the next couple of lessons. All right, you can select, let's say you got a couple that are out of whack here. Let's say uh, that one's over a little bit like that. You can select all of these guys, just draw a box that touches them, or you can even use the ruler bar up here. Watch this, click and drag. See that? You can use the ruler bars to select too. But now that I've got all these selected, I can right click and I can go align left. That'll line them all up on the left hand side. See that? Then I can go right click, size to widest. And there we go. See? Looks a little better. Same thing with these guys here, right? Click, right click. Align left. That lines those all up on the left. See? We'll spend more time with that menu in a bit. All right, so there's first name and last name. Maybe here we'll do customer space ID. Remember, you don't want spaces in your field names, but on your labels, you want that to look nice and human readable. Okay. Company name, we'll slide that up here. And the company names can be pretty wide, so I'll make that wider like that. Same thing with address. All right, address can be pretty wide. We'll do that with the address. All right, city, state, and zip. We'll put city there. I'll do the same thing with state and zip. We'll delete those two boxes. Delete. Right, state can go right up next to it like this. Size state. And of course, if you're in a different country and your address is formatted differently, then format yours accordingly, right? Again, 
Access is like playing with Legos. I can only show you how all the pieces work. You have to put them together however you want. All right, we'll make country nice and big there too. All right, maybe put a space in there for company name. And then we'll go city, state, zip, like that. Sometimes I see people put colons in here. If you want the little colons next to them, that's fine too. I, I used to do that back in the old days, but now I, I kind of tend away from that. All right, save it. Save often. Let's take a peek. Right click, form view. All right, looking good. Looks better. Let's add a splash of color. Let's go back to design view. Now, customer ID is an auto number, so the user can't change that. So to visibly indicate that that's a field they can't change, I like to make it gray. So I'm gonna go to the format tab up here, go to the font section right there, that little paint bucket, that's your background color. I like to stick with the standard colors. All right, we'll talk about themes in a future lesson. Again, I'll put a link down below for the themes lesson, but basically you can set up themes that the user can then change what the theme is. And it changes all the color schemes throughout the whole database. I personally don't like themes. I never use them. I like to set my colors up and that's what you get. Okay. But I'm going to make this like a dark gray like that. And I'm going to left align it. That way the number is on the left side. Okay. Let's save that and see what it looks like. Right click. Form view. All right. Looking better. Let's add a splash of background color to the form. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here in the detail section. Close that field list for now. Let's come back to it in a minute. We're going to go back to the property sheet, which is right there. Okay. The detail section, go to format. Here's your back color right there. Now it's set the background one. Again, I like to use the standard colors. Okay. So you can either click on that little guy there or just go back up to format, drop this guy down and let's pick like a light blue. No, I don't like that one. Let's pick a different one. Let's go with, uh, let's go with that one. Okay. That looks nice. All right. We got a light blue background here. Let's make these labels black so they're easier to read. I'm going to draw a box that just touches them. Drop this guy down and go to black down here under standard colors. That looks a lot better. All right. Save it. Save often. And I like to close my forms once in a while too. All right. Especially once you get into programming later on. It's best to close your form and reopen it. So let's reopen the customer form. There we go. Got a lot of empty space in here, but we're going to fill it up with some more stuff in just a few minutes. Want more? If you'd like to see me post the next lesson in the series for free here on my YouTube channel, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment saying, I'd like the next lesson, please. Click on the link in the description below for more details on how this works.